All right, Hawks, welcome back. Uh, on today's video, we are going to talk about the keyhole drawing. Uh, previously, we have covered how to, let me get back to model space. Previously, we have talked about how to uh, draw rectangles, draw lines, draw circles, copying, using the fillet command. Um, couple here I want to just kind of quickly review. I'm going to do a little deleting here. Okay. So the first one uh, is talking about center marks. And I believe we talked about this in the previous, build, uh, previous video. Um, but I'm going to show you, uh, let me do that, show you a couple uh, different ways to do center marks. Okay. So some of you may have noticed that over here uh, on the top left, I have a blue center mark along with the dimension, okay? And on the rest of the circles we see here, we're seeing a cyan or a light bluish green center mark, okay? And that is on the center layer. So let's talk about how to do those two, because they're different, okay? So first one is, I'm gonna use the generic center mark, okay? Anything that we do center lines for, Generally, we want to be on the center layer. So the first thing I would suggest you do is physically use the drop down for layers and select center. Again, as a reminder, I have seen students using this properties area over here and changing things. These should always say by layer, okay? Color by layer, line weight, and line type all should say by layer, okay? If they have changed there, and you're on a layer that doesn't say that, you should make them say by layer by simply dropping down one and selecting by layer, okay? So keep yourself in, in good standing and make sure you use the layers that are created and you only change them here in the layer properties, okay, the drop down. So the next thing is how do you make that center mark? And uh, we're just going to maybe get rid of this one over here too for demonstration purposes. And I'm on the center layer. And if I go to the annotate menu, annotate menu, there is this option here for center mark, uh, circular center mark, uh, as well as uh, possibly a hidden center uh, axis line. Okay. Uh, however, we're just going to talk today about the center mark option. And this is pretty slick. So I'm going to grab the center mark itself. And I'm going to come down with my pick box. I'm going to select the circle or the fillet, maybe a, an arc. Well, let's go with that because it could, might not be a fillet. Um, the arc or partial circle. And I'm going to left click on it. And you can see right there, it's going to automatically bring that, that center mark in uh, and adjust it according to the circle that you select. Okay. What do I mean by that? Now, that part's kind of maybe a little confusing. So it'll adjust the center mark based on the circle or partial circle that you select. So if we look down here and I'm still in the center mark option, we can see that up in my command prompt. If I select the small circle here, you'll see that I have a different looking center mark than the other ones that I have on the outside of these circles. So if I cancel and I undo that center mark, I come back up and now I get one for the outside arc, you'll see it's a much different sized center mark, okay? So when we have concentric, okay, this circle and that arc share the same center point, okay? Um, we generally want to go and uh, dimension the center, uh, I'm sorry, the arc that is, or the partial circle that is the largest. Okay, again, center mark at the top under the annotate menu, select the circle and it will put in a center mark for me. Okay, next one is the center mark here with a dimension attached. Okay, so let me delete that real quick. And you'll see underneath that dimension, I have a standard center mark, okay? 
the biggest thing you have to watch out for, Hawks, and let me, let me undo there, is that can I see anything of the center line behind the dimension? It looks like they are perfectly the same. Okay, so let me delete that again. And maybe, maybe we'll go through here and we'll just get rid of these center lines as well because usually it's a bad technique to uh, dimension, I'm sorry, uh, to have lines on top of lines, okay? All right, so <clears throat> in this instance, okay, uh, we're gonna go back to the home menu and I'm going to change my layer to the dimension layer. This time we're going to put a dimension in for the circle, or in this case, a partial circle, okay? So again, under annotate, or, excuse me, in my drop down here, under the annotate section, we have the option for a diameter or a radius, okay? And they both work very similarly. So let's just look at these real quick. So if I select this diameter dimension <clears throat> and I come down here and I select this circle, you'll see it's going to give me a center mark. And depending upon what I do with my cursor, it's going to attempt to give me a dimension. Okay. So let's say maybe I wanted that. Okay. So I left clicking by uh, to place it in the location that I want it. And that would be for a diameter. You can see I get a diameter symbol. Now, Maybe we don't want that because I already have a leader dimension over here and we'll, we'll review that real quick again because I, 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 some people uh, probably are not 100% sure on that yet. But if I use the radius option, okay, this should give me a very similar scenario. So I'm going to select the radius corner here, okay, and you can see depending upon where I place my cursor, I'm going to get a different dimension, okay. So I'm going to left click to place that. And now I have that center mark with a radius dimension. Now, some of you may say that that R.5 is probably not where I want that. So if I select that dimension, I'm going to get grips and I should be able to select the grip there. And you can see here, I can drag that out to get it uh, outside of my object. So it's, it's a little bit more proper, okay? So that would be, a dimension for a diameter or a radius. Okay. Uh, next one, this particular uh, object needs an angle dimension. So let's talk about that. So let me delete that angle dimension. And again, I'm just up on the end. I'm sorry, I'm still on the home menu or home um, tab uh, and I am going to select the drop down here for an angular dimension. And if I select the angle dimension, I go from one line to the other line, and it's going to give me an angled dimension. Okay. Uh, some people may think we want to go out. Some people may want to keep it kind of down here um, around the object. Um, I'm going to do it differently than the example was previously when I opened it up and I'm going to come and bring it down here. I'm going to left click and hit escape. And again, I don't really want to have this extension line crossing this text dimension. So I'm going to simply select the dimension with the grip and drag it over. Okay. So very quick angle dimension. Last but not least, this is a leader dimension over here, leader. Okay. Uh, and even though I believe we've done this already, uh, some students get confused uh, because there are a couple different leader options, okay? So the first one is, I think most of you are probably going to this leader option right here. Let me show you the difference. In fact, let me undo that delete so we can see the difference, okay? So I'm gonna get this leader option. And it says, well, hey, where do you want the arrowhead location to be? What I generally suggest you do is you select the center of a circle, okay? Center of a circle. So it'll help you find that center, even if there's not a center mark in it. I'm going to turn off ortho. 
Leaders almost always come out on an angle. We don't want perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical. They come out on some sort of an angle. I'm just going to left click to place that leader there. Now I'm getting a text command. Okay. Now uh, we want this to say 4x dash diameter. Okay. And again, diameter is going to be percent percent C. Okay, so I type in percent percent C and you see it changes that symbol, 0.5, okay? And if I select this check mark up at the top, you'll see I have a very similar looking notation. However, the text is different, okay? Uh, and this is where, um, depending upon what we're looking to do, we may have to do some tweaking, okay? So if I double click on that, it'll take me back in to edit that leader. I select that text that I just created and up here in the top left you'll see that there's a whole bunch of things to control information about the text okay um, but most importantly is we only have this standard style okay we can't get the text style to match the other text that is in this example. So that's why this particular leader option is not what we want to use, okay? So I'm gonna delete that one and let's talk about how to do this leader dimension, uh, which again, we get to it differently. We're just going to type in L-E-A-D-E-R, okay? And you'll see we're gonna be using this first option here that just says leader. Okay, it's a little less complicated uh, and it says hey well where do you want to start that leader and again I'm going to select the center of my circle again I have my ortho off here so I'll bring that out at an angle uh, what's kind of a good technique is you almost want to have it horizontally aligned with let's say the text if if we can the text in another dimension so I'm going to so if you bring this over here and I found the endpoint of the arrow, and it's kind of giving me a horizontal alignment option. So I'm gonna left click the place there, and I'm gonna do a small short section. Left click again, I turn ortho back on. I'm going to hit enter once, and now I can put in my text information. So again, for x, for for x dash percent percent C 0.5 enter once enter again and that is how I would get the dimension text for my leader the last thing that I suggest you do is we started the leader in the center of the circle so I'm going to select the leader and I'm going to come down to the tip of the arrow where there is a grip I'm going to select that you see now I have that arrow attached to my cursor and I want to come to the intersection point that was created by the leader line crossing the outside edge of the circle. And left click to place that tip of that leader. And now we have a leader dimension. Okay. That should be it for uh, the base information for this particular uh, drawing. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in the next video.